This podcast is rated R for restricted. Under 17 requires a company, parent, or adult guardian. Mission to 15. Welcome to the Mission 250 Filmcast. We are doing a special Oscar episode, you guys. That's what this is, if you didn't know. Yeah. Because I, I made you guys watch a movie that's not on the list. So, yay. Hooray. <laughs> <All right. laughs> you guys sound excited. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But typically, what do we do on this podcast? We've been doing it less and less frequently. Yeah, that's right. Normally, we well, we started this podcast. We froze the IMDb Top 250 uh, movies as uh, rated by IMDb users. Uh, and each week, we watch one, and then we comment on it, and then... Sometimes we get a little tired of that. So then we decide to pick movies that are a little bit more modern or that we really like. So that's what we're doing now. Yeah. And this one specifically is what I, I guess, my hopeful for best picture, because this episode will come out. It's two weeks before the Oscars right now, but it's, this is going to come out on the day after the Oscars. So probably Roma is going to win, I would imagine. Uh, oh, but really? Black Klansman might. So fingers crossed. Oh, Roma's on Netflix. We could watch that one. Yeah. Want. Yeah. It's that Roma's kind of sweeping every other award ceremony oh, at this point. So, uh. so this week, yeah, we're going to watch, we did watch Black Klansman directed by Spike Lee. Uh, the synopsis is Ron Stallworth, an African-American police officer from Colorado Springs, successfully manages to infiltrate the local Ku Klux Klan branch with the help of a Jewish surrogate who eventually becomes its leader based on actual events. And this week... I want to ask you guys, did you guys like this movie? Let me know before I go off on it. Uh, yeah, I liked it. You liked it. TC? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a loaded yes. So yeah. is it a loaded yes? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess I'll go on to just describe why I thought we should watch this and why I think it's probably the best movie I've seen this past year. First of all, it like shares my hatred towards the movie uh, Gone with the Wind from like the very first frame, which was kind of instantly uh, I was right, on its right. side. That, I was impressed. It starts off with that. And, and it also, it shows probably the best scene out of Gone with the yeah. Wind. Yeah. It's which, the best I, you're going to get with that movie. Right, right. That's like, you know, that's where, that's where you see all the war wounded and everything. Um, so it shows that scene. Uh, but yeah, that, and, and you got uh, Alec Baldwin. <laughs> he did a good job. And I have a lot to ask you guys about because I feel somewhat manipulated with this movie, but in a good way, like I'm totally on board. And I don't know if it's just because I agree with all of the negative points of view that he kind of puts forth in the movie mm -hmm. uh, kind of fits my exact like the way I feel about the way things are going in the country. So I feel mm -hmm. like I might be just blind to some smaller parts that are, you know, some people are saying this movie does things a little too over the top and things like that. But uh, really? I don't know. I think the best thing that it does is it kind of puts what's going on now into like a historical perspective mm -hmm. in a way where you can, it's easier to look at what's going on now in terms of what has gone on before. And it's kind of like when you're living in it, it's harder to think of things like that. It's like, well, everything's fucked up. I don't know what to do. When, right. when you look at it, like in a movie like this, especially with all of the, like at the end specifically, when you look at that part, what's going on now compared to like all the other historical events that actually happened like the the lynching like this yeah. guy actually existed like all this stuff happened and this is the country we live in and it's right. like and this is what's happening right now and you're like right jesus christ you know you know you, you said that it was super uh, really well i think that you make the point um really well I, I i completely agree with that too that the thing that it might be easy to be like it's like oh they're not that racist or you know they they say america first and they talk about the illegals all the time but you know they're I don't even, yeah. So anyway, I, I think you're right. It, it's, it just really tries to basically, I, I think that's probably the whole point of the movie. What you've hit on, I, I think, right. is just to, to sort of help you put by putting things in context, context by entertaining you at the same time. Cause there are certainly moments where this feels like a buddy cop movie. Oh yeah. It's hilarious sometimes. Yeah. Uh, but then jerking you back into this reality, I think it's, uh, some ways looking at it, it feels kind of sloppy because it's sort of, you, you could feel like it's all over the place, but as a whole, it's, it's just trying to do this, trying to accomplish this thing, which I think it does pretty well. And I would say that like, yeah, I agree. It definitely tonally jumps all over the place, but I think every shift it does works a hundred percent for me. Mm. Yeah. Whatever there was a joke, like all the funny parts that were supposed to be funny. I was laughing. There were some parts where I was laughing really hard and I was like, I should not be laughing at this. This is pretty bad. Like specifically the scene where 
the the racist and his like wife are in bed and they're like that scene in another movie would be them talking about having kids or them like falling in love with each other but what they're actually talking about is just like extremely racist shit but it's you know like the way they're saying it it's like an acutesy little way like right, bed, right. bedside talk and i was laughing yeah. so hard at that scene really i was just disturbed <laughs> and there were other parts where like the first phone call with uh, that Ron Starworth had with uh, the one of the KKK members, the, the way he spoke, it seemed so blown out of proportion how much he hated black people, I guess, oh, you yeah, know, in his yeah. fake thing. And I was like, this, there's no way it's going to work. And the guy's like, you're, oh. per- you're perfect. And you're like, oh, this yeah. is exactly, you know, it seems that was, that totally was pretty unreal. Funny. Yeah, yeah. No, that, I know. It was really funny when the, everybody in the office is like turning around going, what? Yeah. And, yeah. And a lot of that dialogue, like a lot of this movie is true, surprisingly. Some of the most important parts are not true. We can go over that. But a lot of the stuff like uh, the conversation he first had, that was picked pretty much line for line from the uh, the true story, the book that was written about the true story from this guy. So, I mean, even though it seems like comical, I bet it was done in a comical way, kind of. But those were like word for word how the phone conversation went. So it's like, I don't know. Is it funny? Is it, Or is it just like absurd that it's kind of hard to believe that people would actually think that way in like such a I don't know yeah there's just a lot of that stuff it's got me thinking about it there's a ton of really good lines in this movie like I like the one where he talked uh what's his name uh Kylo Ren there what the fuck is his name Adam Driver yeah Adam Driver yeah mentioned something about how like he says something in passing where he says uh I used to not think about it that much or something but now I'm thinking about it all the time and that line is just like yep that's exactly how the last two years have felt so Mm. But yeah, I'm going to keep gushing on this movie, but I don't want to, I could talk for a while. So I want to hear what you guys thought. Did I do you wrong? Did I do you right? Was this a good kind of detour no, from the list? Is, this is a good movie to watch. It's an uncomfortable movie to watch. I think um, it's this really interesting blend the way they do it. I like and the whole how just it keeps shifting tone and, and you sort of like don't know what's coming next. And I particularly like how it ended. It really, I think that the way it ended really sort of brought everything together. Yeah. Because they're showing they're showing you footage from the things that are happening now, and I wasn't expecting that at all. And it's it's such a weird twist in a in a good way. I like where where they have this sort of like happy bro cop uh, ending, you know, where, where the racist cop gets uh, caught. You know, they record the racist cop, and everybody's high fiving each other or whatever. And so you could have ended there as yeah. like this happy happy you know happy buddy cop movie ending. Um, you could have even ended at at the burning cross there and if you want it with the darker ending um that was the original did, ending right oh did they oh it's interesting they decided to add this so on. pre-production is when all this stuff happened so yeah. they had it written where the last shot was going to be the burning cross in their uh okay. in their front lawn but as they were you know pre-production spike lee's like this is going to be the end of the movie now hmm. and it transitioned pretty damn smoothly no it works i, I yeah mean, i think it definitely again, worked. The, the, sort, the sort of the um the inconsistency in the movie sort of helps it, I think, in, yeah. in a way, because it, then you don't feel that you don't feel like completely oddly jerked around when this happens. Because early on, I was going, man, this movie can't decide what it wants to be. And that annoys me. And you tend to want or I don't you, me, me, <laughs> you, by me, I mean me, by you, I mean, by you me. I mean me, but by me, I mean you. So you figure yeah. it out. Yeah. Or me, Everybody. Or, you. Or, or just me. I don't know. Anyway, uh, I tend to kind of you want to see like, um like a vision for a film and consistency kind of like, you know, uh, and, and what's really sort of interesting about this movie is how it jumps all over the place. And that's part of how it's like trying to come at you in all kinds of different ways to make the same point. And it's sometimes it feels like a documentary. Sometimes it feels like a cop buddy movie. Sometimes it's just smacking you in the face with real things that have happened. Mm-hmm. And, and it, and it doesn't care how it does it. Like you, you'll just be like, like Harry ben- Belafonte comes in and does that scene and they're just going to like, look at you showing you pictures of things that have happened. And it's just going to hold on that in, in a very dramatic way, which feels strange when you were just having some cop buddy movement, you know, buddy movements not so long ago. Um, so after you've seen the whole thing, I think it works. It's, it's a bit hard to, to shift from, you know, 70s wild kind of buddy movie to uh, lynching, to the horrible, horrible lynching of, of Washington. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was just, you know, it's just hard to take sort of like, then then it's just hard to move back into into the cop movie part of it. Um, so, yeah, but but again, I, I still think that I, I, after seeing the whole thing, I like I like what was being done. 
I just, I did feel like I was knocked. I was a little bit like, Hey, I was kind of enjoying the seventies kind of, you know, <laughs> It's Make like my almost, movies like all other movies, like, Spike. Like Damn almost, it. yeah. We could have gone straight forward and made this almost like a, a parody of like a black exploit- exploitation film or something, you know, kind of like you know, it's sort of a shaft thing. Um, but uh, but but they, and there's some elements of that, but that doesn't, you know, it doesn't go all the way with that either. It just keeps it moves back and forth between all these things. I think that that's really kind of unique. I don't know if there's any other film that sort of pulls it off this way. That really is like, look, we don't. We're, we don't care how we do it or what style we adopt. Um, we're going to do all these things and, uh, we're, we're just going to keep circling around this, this central point to try to drive some ideas home. And I think that's pretty amazing. Agreed. TC, what did you think? I have two major critiques of this film Uh oh, and they're Uh-oh. both technical. Oh, uh. I'm literally going to abstain from talking about the story because I don't think I should. Okay. Oh, um, so, uh, I am not a huge Spike Lee fan at all. I think he's always kind of, his ego is enormous in these mm-hmm. films and you can see it in this one as well. But that said, it's tough because the story itself needs to be told. Like you said, John, it's very uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, but I really can't stand the stupid fucking grain effects that they put over this whole film. <laughs> it was bothering me to no end. Because really? I'm looking, I was looking into how they shot it, and the DP's point of this was to keep things c- clean, but n- like not go for an effect to put you into a time period. But then they put this grain effect globally over the whole film that just looked either, either it's the encoding on the streaming servers I watched it on, which might be the case, or mm-hmm. it's something that they went overboard with that it was really taking me out of it. Like It would cut sometimes to medium shots where there, someone's face would just be squiggles. And they were clearly like post effect. That's got to be it wasn't, what you watched it, wasn't, it on. It wasn't like like shot that way. There's no way it was fucking shot that way. And it was bothering me so much where I had to move a certain amount of feet back so I couldn't oh, wow. see it so anymore. Oh, blurred in. Oh, wow. yeah, right. Yeah, I didn't notice it on um, my TV, so I don't know. The other thing I really couldn't fucking stand is that horrible song they kept playing throughout. The oh, whole I knew thing. it. That was what I, I, I guess it's gonna I, be. I, I was like. <laughs> I, if I hear this fucking thing one more time, I swear to God, I am going to fucking throw something at the TV. <laughs> it is the worst score put to us. Like, I think that there must have been an intentional reason why he chose to do this. But it, for me, it totally didn't land. So, so I don't know what the fucking reasoning was, but it was awful. Do you see yeah, one of my concerned. two negatives in this movie? That was one of them. It, I mean, it's like you're watching the worst daytime lifetime movie you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> what I think it's supposed and, to be is it's supposed to be black exploitation uh, combined with like almost an army march for a lot of But it wasn't. It. it was cheesy, like shitty digital porn music. Yeah, it's kind of what black That's, exploitation music is. Yeah, but they were like better at it. I don't know what it was. <laughs> they, had, they had better sounds. This just sounded like too lame. I don't know. It was bothering me to no end. Um, but yeah, that's literally, I, I was thinking about it earlier. I'm like, I'm not going to comment on anything else in this. Oh, one, dude, so. it, it's really fine. It, it's okay. I mean, it, no, no, and, no, it's, it's, okay. it's not. <laughs> <laughs> that's as I was watching this, like you said, I, not, I was uncomfortable, not because of like, you know, agreeing or disagreeing with the story. I was uncomfortable because, because like, I know damn well I'm white and I shouldn't ever mm. talk about any of this. So oh. Oh. that's like, cause it's just not like. Nothing I can say is ever going to be correct because we like basically destroyed a whole people. You know, I mean, like for years and years and years, we ruined people's lives. So like, it's hard for me to watch this and not just be like regretful of like where I come from. Oh. Right. Yeah. And like, which is great because that's what they're trying to do. But in the same time, they're not because it's lighthearted and they're trying to like, I don't know. They're like the use of jokes here and there where. Were good, but they were also just like, I don't know if this is even a good thing to be like <laughs> laughing at, or yeah. like if I'm not, you know, it was very uncomfortable to watch this one, but not in a way of like disagreeing with the story. Like they hit so many points that need to be talked about at all times with racism. And and really like the ultimate like fundamental issue in this movie was portrayed very, very well. But I don't really have a comment on story, like how they approached it the only problems i had was with the grain and the uh shitty fucking song they kept playing over and over and over again (laughs) 
Uh, that's, well, it sounds like it got me. to you, and that's so that's kind of yeah. the perspective I I want. Like, yeah, this movie. I don't think it makes me. It makes me angry. I mean, I'm kind of angry all the time now, and you know, like if, in this topic, it's hard not to be. Right. But I agree. It's it's something I don't know. No, and I mean, I feel like they didn't even yeah. give it. Like they need to be more fucking. Like it needs to be more ridiculous against the white people. <laughs> I'm not even sure. It, like totally fucking hit the nail on the head for yeah. And I mean, it portrayed the coffin it pretty reef accurately, built for but it still seemed unbelievable in a lot of the right. different parts. Yeah. So if they went right. even further, then like, would anybody would it have like been relatable at all? I don't know. I, I yeah, I don't know. I I mean, I feel like you know this one teeters on the edge of of being like not offensive and humorous but also offensive and not humorous at the same time, which is a pretty impressive, really, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, it's doing what it's supposed to do, but fucking Spike Lee, man. I, yeah, I don't know. I am just not a fan of his for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah, but I mean, was, he, uh, he does have a huge... He's very outspoken in a lot of things. And he's well, done it's not that. It's just the things. way he, like, does these things. Like, the way he crafts these stories. Like, I'm not just not sure of sometimes. Huh. But then again, like, it would be a totally different movie if it was all serious. Yeah, right. would it be right? better like, or worse? It would be. Would it be better or worse? Uh, probably worse because it'd be unbearable. Yeah, but like right. the whole What's idea this? is so unbearable to think about that. Like sometimes I was just watching this, like, oh man, I don't know. Yeah, there isn't black exploitation films anymore for the reason. Like, right. like so we shouldn't be going that way. And right. like, I don't know. There was yeah, I don't know. This was a uh, this was a tough one. Tough one. It was yeah. good, but it wasn't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know I either. That's what I, I want to talk about. Say. Uh, yeah, I don't <laughs> know what to say. Tough. Yeah, yeah it, was it was tough. I understand that point. And it's hard to comment either, too. It's like, who, who are we to sort of judge this sort of thing, right? Well, right. 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 And I mean, we but, watch a movie a week, which is not that much, but I mean, it's more yeah. than most people. And in terms of like a movie and in terms of, I mean, how many movies have we watched? I mean, this one's not even on the list, uh, probably because it brings up such mixed feelings in people, I would imagine. Yeah. But I mean... I'm trying to think of like, and I was trying to think of movies we'd watch like in the, you know, 120 or 30, what are we at now? 120 uh, best movies of all time we've watched that have gotten like such an uh, emotional response out of the entire movie. I don't, I can't think of very many. Like I, mm. you know, I don't know. Yeah. The ending, especially like you just kind of sit there. Right. And you're like, well. Yeah. And I've never seen that. I've never seen that footage. I, I, have you guys seen that? Any of that I had, footage? That, yeah. That, oh yeah, I had I'd watched almost it's all of it. No, I, oh really? I've never seen any of it. So I, I thought that completely... little coda there at the end. That's because that's kind of what it is, right? It's, it's a like coda. A, yeah. Like a, yeah, yeah, it's a coda. Uh, was was you know? I mean, it really. I, I mean, it definitely was a great addition to. Yeah. It did not take away by any means to the story. To add that in as like a secondary no, no, be, feeling because, again, at it's, all. it's like hitting you back from if anybody's sitting there thinking, ah, oh, well, things are pretty rough then. You know, they're okay now. No, they're the fucking we're, same yeah. in places <laughs> like Virginia right. or, right. you know, other southern, you know, states. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. This was a hard one because I was fucking hating on it hard, technically. <laughs> Enjoying it as a story. Acting was good. Yeah. Uh but at the same time, I'm sitting there, be like, "Oh, Spike Lee's such a fucking asshole," <laughs> you know? Like, they're like that's like that's literally what I was saying. I was like so uh, torn, like the whole time I was watching this. It was probably why it's yeah, it's a fucking good movie. Fuck off, you know. Fuck you, you made a good movie. You're a prick, <laughs> you know. And it's not it's not because I'm angry about like the racism part. I'm just like the angry yeah. of like the assembly. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, he's a pretty, uh, I don't know enough about him to really talk about him, but I've seen a few things recently that he's done, like, outside of his filmmaking that is not great. Uh, mm. So, I don't know. I mean, like, he's a pretty, I don't think you could probably love him entirely or hate him entirely unless you really don't like all of his movies. But, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Well, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, they, like ultimately, there's so much more going on than just this film. And that's probably why it's good that he did the story. Yeah. Right. I was like, it brings up all these other things. And that's like also, that's what art is supposed to do, right? right. It really to get tries you to thinking. address like our times and right. how, how, I mean, I think that that's, I agree. I don't think, I don't think I've seen a film do that, that really tries to make this sort of point and, and like connect the past with the present. Right. Um, I that's think not that's, like a documentary or something. Right, right. Right. Even then. Right. But, but so I think what it set out to do is, is quite, yeah. Um, that fucking so, song. 
I'm telling you. <laughs> I knew it, dude. I knew I, it. I don't but understand what they were thinking. The, the guy who wrote that the score is nominated for an Oscar. I, I don't know why, but I do think, I agree with you that it's definitely overused and it's kind of annoying. But the ending part, like where the music kind of transitions into the footage from Virginia, it's so it good. It works there. there. So put it there. Yeah. 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 Like, leave it there. Like, do something else for the other parts that like, because to me it was like, that first fucking scene where they had the dumb fucking shitty music, it wasn't even that one song. It was just like that style of like, like, I don't know, just digital, you know, all in the box, you know, just nothing authentic about it, but just all like soft synth sounds mixed together into like, I was like, what are we on like a daytime fucking sitcom? What is going on here? <laughs> and then like the scene that they went into didn't even have any of that. So it's like this doesn't match remotely. Huh. And I'm not understanding what the effect is. Like, what, what, what is the effect he's going for by choosing this shitty ass song to transition and segue into the next scene? Like, what, am I missing something? <laughs> That's what I was saying. Like, for the next minute or two after that song stopped, the first opening one where they start like panning over to this house, yeah. I was like, what was the point there? What did I miss? I'm rewinding it. Like, am I missing something? <laughs> Like, is it, is it, is it like, what is it because I'm fucking white that I'm missing this shit? Like, I'm, I'm like going into like all these deep thinking things. It's like, no, it's just a shitty song. That's all it is. <laughs> it's, okay. it's just a shitty Sometimes song. It's okay. It's just crappy. Yeah, it's just a shitty pick. I don't have to think about this any further, but it took me like 15 minutes to get past this. I like it how the first 10 minutes you're making it last 30 minutes. Just rewinding oh, God. 10 minutes. Oh, rewinding it. I'd be like, what the fuck am I missing? Did I miss it again? And then you're like, you know how you rewind it once. Getting and then more you're more and more annoyed and upset. Yeah, you rewind it once, and then you're like, you like look away for a second to do something else and you're like, ah, oh, shit, maybe I missed it there. I got to go back again. It was you like, rewind, Spike like, Lee pops yeah. up. He's like, and now for a purposely shitty song. And then it so, goes, yeah, right. And and you're like, like, oh, that's why oh, I got it. Oh, okay. So I missed it. That's cool. Now I know. <laughs> that was bothering me to no end. And it's such like an incidental thing to the rest of the movie. The movie is so much more important than this stupid fucking song. <laughs> yeah. But that's like how important sometimes like little elements like that are to a film, right? Like you can literally lose someone in that second. Yeah. And, and you do it over and over back. again because they keep doing the song over and over right. again. So if you don't like right. it once, you're not going to like it 10 times. Right. Exactly. Yeah. John, did, I mean, I noted that. Did you that bother you at all or were you fine? I didn't, with notice. Didn't, I notice. didn't notice the song. I am, don't know. I it's probably because he had it on silent with the subs on. Yeah. Subtitles on on a phone in bed <laughs> two yeah. o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I yeah. do what I can, man. I do what I can. <laughs> Didn't notice the grain because the screen was three inches long. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. What else, guys? I got some notes. There's like no trivia so, stuff so for this not one. So. Steve Buscemi was in it. Oh, yeah. Who's who's that? <laughs> he was the not Steve Buscemi character. Yeah. What the fuck are we talking about? He's the other <laughs> undercover, co or not the undercover yeah, the cop undercover, guy. Undercover. But oh, he's I see that Steve Buscemi's I'll brother was in it. Oh, I don't know if it was his brother. Oh. Did you know Denzel Washington's son was the main character? Oh, that's his I son? That's his son. That's his son. His no eldest wow. son. Yeah. He's good. Yeah, yeah he, he was, was great. Do you think that... So Adam Driver is the only actor to get nominated for an acting award. Does that seem really? right really? to you guys? I, why? I, mean, I, could, I could argue... I like Adam a lot. And I, but yeah, I could but argue why? that he was, he was kind of flat in this. Yeah. I didn't think he stood out. What Agreed. the fuck? Are you serious? That's because he's already fucking... He's already on a roll. It's some right. bullshit Hollywood stuff. Yeah, it's that like, happens yeah, all the time. Yeah. That's it's fair. like, that's oh, fair. the people that are actually good. No, no, no. They're not on fire like this guy is. Yeah, well, so. yeah, definitely that's the case. He's he's like the he's hot. You we know, can't right nominate him for Kylo Ren because we'll lose respect from right. all the people. Exactly. So we gotta wait until the next one. Whatever the next one is, throw him something. That's fair. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, that's that's just great. Yeah, we nominate the white guy. Yeah. No, <laughs> on the fuck I know, right? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> See, <laughs> it, I'm laughing, but it's not funny. It's not know, funny. But... No, it's fucking horrible. It's awful. And Ugh. it's true. This is why I was like, I have two things to say. And then I went into the fucking critique anyway. Yeah. Why the mm. fuck are they nominating that dude? There was no way he was as good as the lead. No, yeah. not even close. No, the lead actor one is way harder to get. The supporting actor ones. I mean, that's oh, I see. it's kind of more of a gimme one because the not like almost never a supporting actor has stuff that's hard to do. 
Yeah, but why yeah. would they not nominate him? But God, I mean, he was he he had he had a lot to do in this film. Yeah, yeah he, he was good really well. too. He was because you're against believable. Christian, you're against Fat Christian Bale this year, guys, and no one's going to beat Fat Christian Bale except for maybe Rami Malek. <laughs> One of those two guys is going to get the award. There's no, no point in thinking about beats it. Fat Christian Bale, nobody. <laughs> <laughs> Except maybe maybe a, a, a skinny Daniel Day Lewis or fat <laughs> fat Daniel Day Lewis would totally clobber fat Christian Bale, but other than that, <laughs> there's no way. Yeah, it's fucking you know the Oscars, whatever. Fuck yeah, em. yeah, no one cares. I mean, it's getting yeah. worse. Like they're not even they don't even have a host this year. No, um, I don't know. I mean, depends what you think. But if Roma wins, which it looks like it's going to, it's a Spanish language movie produced mm. you know in Mexico, and that's. Good. That's cool. Yeah. All right. Do we need to watch that one now? Uh, you guys could. I don't. <laughs> I, we shouldn't do an episode on it because there's nothing to talk about with that movie. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. I mean, maybe it's there is. More, maybe more I just right. didn't get it. But man, okay. it was slow. <laughs> it was like uh, the slowest movie I've ever seen. But, but still, but good. Worth watching. I would say worth watching if you love cinematography because it's one of the best looking movies I've ever seen for sure. Oh, damn. Wow. Okay. Well then. Yeah, so that's worth it for that, but make sure you have a cup of coffee next to you and like some time because it's long and slow. So maybe I won't watch it. Yeah, well, at least like put it on for, give it like 10 minutes. And if you're like, wow, this hasn't even started yet, that's the entire movie. So, (laughs) oh, okay. That's actually a really good, uh, I like that. In that, so that's not not entirely true. A couple things happen, but like, you're like, hey, heads up, folks. Uh, if you go in and you're in there for 20 minutes and you go, when is this going to start? It doesn't walk out. Yeah. (laughs) You're not going to like it. That's how the movie is. You're just going to hate this and that's the end of it. So, there you go. So, was it Michael? So, I have Michael Buscemi here on IMDb as Jimmy Creek. Was was Jimmy Creek flips, uh, the other guy that was in the room? The other guy that was at like Flip's partner, sort of. Uh, let's see, what does Michael Buscemi look like? Because we for a while, the first of the film, we were like, "Hey, is that guy Steve Buscemi?" Because it's not Steve Buscemi, but man, it looks like Steve Buscemi. I, I thought it looked like <laughs> Steve Buscemi even too. It was the uh, the guy that was with Adam Driver, like the yeah. his partner. I can't even always way down here, Michael Buscemi, Jimmy Creek. Who is Jimmy Creek? Yep, that's him. Snag. Yep. I don't know. Steve Buscemi had a brother. Well, I'm assuming it's his brother. Oh. Because I, you know, because <laughs> his name is Buscemi. Uh, and, he, and he's got the same eyes. Or rather, he's got the same under the eye structure that Steve Buscemi has. That'd be weird if there was, yeah, brother of Steve Buscemi. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Uh, uh, so I got some trivia, guys. Do you want to get into this now? What you got? Yeah. I guess so, yeah. I mean, again, it's, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, this movie says it's a true story. Depending on how critical you are of that sort of thing, a lot of it is true. And in terms of like the plot, some of the biggest portions of the plot are not true. Specifically, mm-hmm. the bomb scenario at the end, that entire thing was right, made all up. Of that. Yeah. The Patrice character was made up. Uh, and I would say those are the two biggest made up parts of the movie. Uh, the guy. That's not too bad, though. That's not too bad. And it's no, like. I mean, the, the David Duke interaction supposedly actually did take that picture. Yeah, but um, it's the loss. It so lost. I, don't, I don't believe that really f- yeah, for one second. Uh, I Dude, you keep that. that picture, man. Right, right. I love that they picked uh, what's his name, Eric from uh, uh, that Topher Grace. Show. He was perfect. Yeah, he, perfect. Did, he did a great job. Nerdy white dude. Too. Yeah, yeah. I kind of took me out though. I was like, this guy is so used to being hated on whatever he does. He might as well <laughs> just be David Duke and just like, you know, take it. Just be hated. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you never saw Spider Man Three, did you, TC? You don't know no, Topher Grace I hates. Sc- Skip the I guy. Mean, I didn't make it to three. Did I make it to three? Who was Topher in three? He was the Sandman. Th- or no, not the oh, Sandman. No, no, no. He was no, Venom no. or whatever. No, no. He was Venom. I was going to say, the Sandman was lol. We should watch the Spider-Man, co- the, the cartoon. <laughs> We're just going to start watching non-list apparently, movies. Apparently that got nominated for an Oscar too. It's it's supposed to be quite good. Yeah, it's let's just watch in, all the Oscar the, ones. Into the Spideyverse. Spideyverse or Spider-Verse? I don't know, Spidey verse, probably Spider verse. Spidey verse. Yeah, you think? Wait, <laughs> Spidey or Spider verse? I think it's Spider verse. Yeah, we're just a bunch of nervous white guys. We're just going to kind of yep. circle yeah. around this film, <laughs> yep, that's just what like we're Spike Lee did with the topic. Yep, 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 <laughs> Spider Man, yep, yep, yep. guys. How much wider can we get? <laughs> yeah, I mean, boy, certainly felt like it watching it. Yeah, I just can't believe that people treat other people like that. That's what I don't get. 
I don't it's get hard it to watch this shit. It doesn't make any sense. It's hard to understand. You're right, it's like, Spider-Verse. It's the fucking dumbasses. <laughs> it's you, Spider-Verse. Spider-Verse. <laughs> yeah, so back to Spider-Verse. <laughs> yeah, All yeah, right, yeah. right, so, colon, uh, Spider-Verse, right, guys. Right, 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 right. So yeah. Spider-Verse. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I don't... Um, Certainly, I, my my wife who grew up uh, spent some time around the Ozarks in Missouri was like, yeah, there. She knew some people like this, um, and certainly there are people that really define a good chunk of their lives ar- around hating other people. And and I have no idea. I mean, in where I grew up, it was more um, racism was like just politely ignoring the people that you were racist against. Uh, just that was more the way of things there. But um, on one hand, it's hard to understand, but you see it. Um, and people really define themselves by it. And man, it really speaks to people. And, yeah. And certainly uh, a lot of our current president's base of support comes from um, some of that message uh, and what, what they call like dog whistles, where he's, he's using phrases and, and things that really rally these people to them. And certainly, you know, he's not even doing um, that anymore. He straight up said he doesn't want Latin Americans coming into this country. Oh, I know. No, he's like been overheard as calling them animals. Yeah. Um, huh. Fuck, fuck and, it. Sis um, and again, that was, it wasn't like, you know, we didn't, we don't have a recording of it, but it, it's like, yeah, that makes sense. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, right. Yeah. So I just don't understand it myself. And uh, I don't even think a movie like this does it justice enough. Um, no, but it's but trying, it, and it does a good and it's job. Trying. It does, yeah, and they, they, we, they a, damn well know if they want to fucking sell tickets, they can't go over the top. Well, no, but it's also a line to walk where you want to try to open people's minds up a bit. You don't want to go too far and be rejected. You, you want to try to push the needle. Or Well, you, so and, hey, look, mean, let's be quite honest, right? The, the truth of, of politics has been spread to audiences mainly through comedy. Right? Like, think about all the stand-ups that we've ever watched, right? They're always That's talking fair. about oh, shit yeah. that they don't fucking give a shit anyone else cares they talk about, right? Because they're up on that stage and they're able to just be like, this is ridiculous, isn't it? And everyone's like, holy shit, that's funny. And then when they laugh, <laughs> they think about it and they're like, fuck, man, actually, that's fucked up. And like, yep. that's crazy, right? So like, this is another thing, right? Like, they're, they're, they're using the mouthpiece of art to relay information that's truthful. And like, you still have to be a little bit funny or like, Nobody fucking listens. Right? Yeah, right. Well, and, and uh, honestly, that's true. Like, and uh, think about it, like in terms of my exposure to black people was initially through comedians, Eddie Murphy in particular. I mean, uh, uh, Richard Pryor. The, I mean, yeah. I mean, do you know how many white people probably saw Richard Pryor? Were like, oh, they're not yeah. all that bad. <laughs> like that definitely <laughs> happened when he first started in the 70s. I mean, I imagine he has to because like yeah, yeah, the, the people I grew up around were racist and we're in the city. So I can't even imagine the people growing up in the middle of fucking nowhere yeah. that don't even have a TV, that don't fucking listen and go to any shows or don't, you know, just go to a public school and realize the guy next to you is not that bad because he's darker color than you. Right? Yeah. Like you, you had media and you're damn yeah. lucky they had it, it wherever they were watching. Right. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Comedy is like the, the, the one way that we all interpret things that we can be like, <laughs> oh, you're laughing too? So you don't feel so bad about this either? Yeah, okay, cool. It, Woo-hoo. <laughs> Woo-hoo. You know? <laughs> so I understand why he has to go into those moments in the movie because he, I mean, if you don't, how are you going to keep people's attention? You can't go straight documentary sure. because then no one's going to like actually you can't just start beating people over the head. You can't be beating people over the head are. with it. Right. You got to yeah. kind of have like a, a malleable line of, Racism versus non-racism versus comedy. Yeah. It's a very difficult fucking thing to do. And I'm, of course, I'm just glad that like, I, even though I don't like the guy, like he's probably one of the few that can do it. Fair enough. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and actually do it decently so that you, you have a wide range of audiences that then dissect that information. Whereas like, you don't want to go against the audiences. So you don't want to like skew it a certain way that only brings out the LA crowd. But like, right. I feel like a person in Virginia will watch this and probably get something out of it and maybe fucking laugh enough to think that they're idiots mm. and they're making dumb decisions on other people. So that'd be nice. That'd be nice. <laughs> yeah. But then again, they're all fucking voting for a wall. So I don't know. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know. At some point it's, you dedicate yourself to your whole life to this. It's not easy to just shift. I, I don't know. I mean, I haven't watched it in a long time, but American History X was another movie more about. Oh, from that the, one was the, tough. That too. was tough. That's on the list. More, that, that one was, was brutal. Oh, it is. Yay. That one's just like 
an onslaught of that's, terror. Yes, that's yeah. what this would be if there was no comedy in it, pretty much. Exactly. Right. So it would be, right. it'd make for an interesting comparison when we get to that movie because it's also primarily the whole point of that movie is telling the point of view from the racists themselves. Um, and so, it, yeah. Oh, I'm, feeling, I'm a little sad we have to watch that one again. But, <laughs> Me too, uh, man. Uh, I, know, I, I remember that one being a tough one. And, and, that, and that was just one I came across being like younger too and just like watch it on HBO or something like that and remember being horrified and at the end you just feel I mean, you feel sick after watching that movie yeah. well yeah I mean especially when you're growing up with some of your best friends being black or uh, you know Hispanic or any other race yeah. then <laughs> I mean it was just like wait people actually think about that this shit like and I, yeah. you know I grew up in an Irish Catholic household there were jokes but I don't think there was any one of us that actually hated them right like and then like the, you get a real inclination that they fucking hate these people it's well, right. not like, like like somehow they're no they're, they're the bad guys they're the right. evil on this earth like your whole right. life or not your whole life but certainly a great deal of your energy and mental thought is all about how they are evil and how you have to fight that evil as if you're so, as if you're like the hero of your own comic book or whatever it's um, insane yeah i don't know it defines you know maybe that's that's some of the appeal of it it really can define your life and give you this sense of purpose uh, and that's something that may be hard to find. Um, you know, we, we all, yeah. we all have like our own, all of our movies, we have the good guys and the bad guys and the good guys fighting the bad guys and, and just trying to create, being able to create this caricature of, of good versus evil and feeling like you're on the side of, of good fighting evil. And maybe there's some real appeal to that. Um, but, uh, or also somebody else to blame for all of your, your shitty life and your shitty problems, which yeah, you know, maybe it's it's much better to just to just push that out on this to blame the black people because you can't get a job or because you know you're not happy with your life, or um, maybe it's because you're so fucking dumb and unlikable that you need to find a group that's full of dumb and unlikable people, and the only thing you can find a group with is to hate other people that might not be as dumb and there, unlikable right? as that are dumb are. and unlikable. Then, and yeah, all of a sudden your life has meaning. Yeah, and you have I love found other fucking you know, assholes you can hang around with for the rest of I your life. I will condescend yeah. dumb people all day and all night. I don't give a shit. This is great. <laughs> Fuck them. They're so stupid. They can only meet other stupid people and then <laughs> racism just happens to be their fucking strong suit. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Maybe not yeah. every dumb person is, you know, goes into that, but they're certainly no, all dumb. But the people that are there are. Yeah. They're dumb. Yeah, I don't give a shit. Yeah. I'll call them that right now. You can edit this out anyway. Fuck it. No, <laughs> fuck them. Don't listen to yeah, the podcast. Fuck Go fuck yourself. I mean, yeah, if you right. identify as a racist, what the hell are you doing listening to this podcast anyway? Right. Jesus Christ. That's true. Well, and that's the thing that you see even like with the Trump supporters where where they're like, they're like patting themselves off in the back are proud because they're not, they're no longer having to do the difficult things of trying to see other people's perspectives or be kind or um, do all of the really hard things, which are trying right. to see other points of view trying to be nice to people, trying to also be charitable. Like a lot of that just is gone. And they've, they're like, this is great. This, yeah. We I just get free. to be selfish. Fuck them. Yeah. yeah. I can right. be selfish. I can be, uh, I can just only protect people that are like me and I can feel really good about it and not have to be embarrassed because I'm, I'm a racist, sexist asshole. Right. And isn't that liberating? And aren't I like a, you know, and, and you see people like that and you see, I see shirts around here like that, proudly proclaiming how they're they're a white, red-blooded American, and they're proud of it, and they're gonna, you know, you know, they're not embarrassed to say it. And Jesus, um, it's uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it's insane. It, it's really, it, it's this idea because because being, I don't know, you know, being nice, being compassionate, all that's really hard. Trying to understand different it's points is really hard. Yeah. So it's like maybe there's also this sort of like this is the simple life, you know, just hate the people that are different than you and blame them for all your problems and and everything else. And and then you get to feel really good. You know, I don't know. And it's, but, uh, I mean, I hate the people who hate those people. What does that make me worse? Like, am I? Yeah, right. Like we're still hating. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. That's well, is, that, is that a bad I mean, thing or am I supposed to become Gandhi now all of a sudden? Yeah, well, you're supposed to be Zen, but even Gandhi stole ideas from somebody. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, there's always some fair, bullshit. But it does. It doesn't help things to just hate right back. That's not the answer either, right? That doesn't fix anything. Um, the answer is educating people. The answer is even like the the people. So you you can, you can make some arguments that um, that a lot of the people that say are are supporters of of the current uh, arguably racist, misogynist, et cetera, et cetera, president are they're they're also disenfranchised they're people that have been left behind by technology they've been um you know so the idea is like well just if we 
if we were to work to make better lives for everybody so that they didn't have, you know, that they, they had better, more opportunities, that we had better education system, blah, 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 that would help. Um, and th- those are the, that's the answer. Is I like don't know, man, because I went to a school with know? a bunch of racist assholes in Western Massachusetts and they did yeah. not try in school. No, they were I mean, dumb like, as fuck. You can kind of blame their parents. You can blame like their upbringing and stuff. But to like, yeah. how long can you do that? You're not going to be able to like all of a sudden be like, all right, everyone gets to go to the same good school. Like if that was possible, right, right. we'd be doing that now. That's fucking impossible. Like, and then some yeah. kids are going to get left behind because they're either they come from bad homes, which you can't fix because they're bad and they're going to stay bad. And those people are going to have kids more frequently than people who know what they're doing because people who know what right, they're doing right. are like, wow, the fuck would I want a kid? It would end my life. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> or like just you know they think ahead further than the you know the moment where you're like do you have a condom? No, fuck it, do it. Yeah, you know that type of shit. That's a fair point. It's you can get an point. abortion. Um, I can't afford one. All right, let's just have a kid. Hey, fuck it. It's yeah. cool. Feels great. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Oh, you're cheating on me? Crap. All right, I'm gonna have this kid uh, anyway. Fuck it. We're gonna fuck. Yeah. I don't know, boys. So there's no. I mean, if it was an easy fix, there would be a fix. There's no easy fix. There's no, no easy there's fix. Not, and the only thing like, that can probably fix it is education. And determination from all sides to uh, work together. And that's uh, not happening in our current climate. So we're going to have a lot more of this ahead of us. And just be glad that we live, well, me and Denny live, in a place where (laughs) everyone's very liberal. And you don't have to see it every second. We're not so bad in Minnesota. Uh, No, I know. But I'm sure there's your fair share. Whereas here, there's none of it. None of it. I mean, you literally, like, you'd have to leave the area. I have only seen one Make America Great Again hat. Hmm. And to be fair, there's people out here that have them, so I, would say I guess like, you're right. Worn by the dad and his son. Oh, Jesus Christ. How old was Both the son? blonde and blue-eyed. Yeah, I don't know. He's like seven. No, God damn no. It. Overweight and brunette. <laughs> Both of them. Ah, <laughs> interesting. I wouldn't have thought that. Interesting. Uh, <laughs> overweight and brunette. Put a freaking Budweiser hat on that kid for fuck's yeah. sake. Class it yeah, up a why, bit. Yeah, why not? Give him a WWF t-shirt. <laughs> Nothing to fucking MAGA hat. I mean, come on. Yeah. Oh, Give my the God, kid a the chance, will you? Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> Do you guys want to hear more about what's true in this? I can list it off. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. I, that's yeah. Not too good to know. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that, that story about the, uh, the Jesse Washington story about the lynching and mm-hmm. up and down uh, that all yeah. happened exactly oh, as he described it. Oh, with the fire and everything. Yep. You know, I went and read it. If you want to read a really disturbing, like the, the Wikipedia page for it is really terrifying. The pictures I are there. I don't want to read that. Really scary. There are people on the yep. like. There's a burnt body on a on a tree, and there are people oh, smiling in the backgrounds. God, yeah. damn it's horrible. It. What's wrong with these people? I don't know. Uh, Can you imagine like doing it? Like, let's say you're not racist. Let's say that you're just a normal person that doesn't even see race or color. But who in their right mind said, "No, let's just push them up and know. down on the fire. Let's put them on the fire. Fuck but it." Two hours. Yeah, I um, would be yelling, screaming, kicking, fighting. Fuck you. Fuck you. Really, fuck I would, you. I know what I do. Coward that I am. I would just not be at the scene. Oh, uh, but I uh, just can't imagine the idea. Like everyone's been burned, right? You burnt. You, you, you grabbed a hot skillet before, right? That hurt, didn't yeah. it? Jesus. All right. Why would you do this to someone else? they cut his fingers and dick off. Oh, right. God. And he was trying to climb up the chain to get away from the fire, but he couldn't because his fingers were cut off. I... Don't so, want to hear this story. I know story it's, it's fucking. It's it's yeah. It's terrible. That's infuriating. Oh. You just want to go back, and then the problem is, I have the same anger towards someone else now. Yep, it makes me angry. It's like, uh, and then it, I mean, I've been so. There's a good podcast called Last Podcast on the Left. John, I think you've heard of that one before, right? Uh-huh. They talk a lot about how fucked up people are, and like they did a recent episode on uh, public executions. Uh, and that's right. It's and pretty that used interesting. To be a thing. You yeah. used to go, hey, let's go watch the beheadings. What are you doing today? You going to the beheadings? Go to the hey, let's date. Actually, let's I was going to get coffee, but I could certainly do a beheading. <laughs> and the way they talked about it too first. is like they'd want people <laughs> to do it cleanly because you didn't want it to be too disgusting. So there was like a middle ground of like cutting well, yeah, someone's head off cleanly. Well, but if you yeah. have to like chop ten times and the person's like gurgling and like moving around, people are like, oh my god, that's disgusting. Wow. <laughs> Hi, all. The guillotine is looking for. Uh, Feedback. If you wouldn't mind <laughs> filling out your scorecards Drop on the way the out, box. that'd be great. Drop them in the box. We have <laughs> pencils was, for you if here your in the bucket. paper is saturated with blood, I have more pieces of paper up here. <laughs> Ab- Absolute. And uh, we're also taking questions in the um, session afterwards in the breakout room to your right. 
So please go ahead and come by, and we'll just be talking about blood, gore, and murder. If you have young ones and you want an inflatable axe, it'll be five dollars. <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's no right. Way. Please those, visit those the inflatable store. Inflatable axes for your souvenir. are thirty fucking dollars. Yeah. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> rip you those, off, man. So those inflatable axes are two pelts and uh, <laughs> fourteen coffee beans. Uh, just leave them there on the corner. You fucking like, numb nuts. The Disney on ice of the old days. Yeah. God, I hate these people. <laughs> Balloons at uh, carnivals are like food at ski resorts, John. Is that right. what that is? Yeah. They know you need one so they can charge whatever they want. Oh, yeah. No, no. They know that, like at the Disney on Ice thing. Again, here we are. I'm going white boy here again. Sorry. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Disney on Ice. Let's <laughs> just this is talk about the same things. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, man! No, they, they they have these they have these stupid stupid light up like plastic ones that are be like thirty bucks. They probably cost like two cents to make, but holy cow, they know that your little kids are gonna be like, I want that. Yeah, and you're already there. It, it's like a different thing. You already so spent really... three hundred bucks on everyone's ticket. So exactly, what's another thirty so, bucks? Right. Right. So yeah, it's, it's a tough call. And they're like, yeah, we'll probably let them get one thing, you know, and they know that. So yeah. anyway. And then yeah. on the car ride home, they're already on the ground and you're like, honey, do right. you not like your new toy? And she's playing with her old toys again. Right. Like, the battery's already it. dead. Yeah. yeah it, whatever. <laughs> anyway. Uh, back, oh. back to the, back to the uh, public. Listen to our opinions though, on sorry. this movie. Yes. Do that. Oh, I mean, me. you know, we're off the movie at this point. We're talking about the bigger, the story, which again, at the end of the day, man, the movie did what it was supposed to do, didn't it? It, yeah. I think it did. So fuck you, yeah. Spike Lee. You did it again, you <laughs> son of a bitch. You made me furious. You made me feel <laughs> things, and I don't like feeling things. No, I love feeling things. I just don't like feeling things where I feel like shit. Yeah. Like, because yeah. of someone else like me. Not because, of, you know, I don't mind feeling bad about stuff I did wrong, but like, but it's weird because you're identifying know. as, you're, you're not racist. You're just white. No. It's not your no, fault. No, but you're I'm white. white. No, I know, but there's nothing we can do, but this is awful because no matter what, we we can never be in this position they were in. That was all, I mean, it was such yeah. a terrible thing. There is nothing that I can ever do or say to make up for it. And like knowing that someone else out there that had the same background I do could be so evil is infuriating and depressing all at the same time. Yeah. No. I don't know. Agreed. Have you ever thought back and like, you know, like you have a lot of ancestors and you know, not all of your ancestors were like stand up dudes. No, awful. They were yeah. shitheads, drunks, fighting at the bar. You know, I <laughs> still got those qualities. <laughs> so uh, they got, they're still there from someone. So <laughs> they got this Worcester accent. All of them yeah, had this. Right. Yeah. They've been to the Palladium with a wall sweat. They're, full, oh, they're filling no. trash bags with yellow ones. They're doing all sorts of dumb shit that no one else does anywhere wait, wait, else. Wait, wait, this is the wall sweat I understand. With yeah. Trash bags with yellow ones? What's that mean? I already told that story. I thought we used to have to fucking cover our trash bags with yellow bags that you had to buy specifically at the store. No, what's that? Oh, yeah, they used to sell specific trash bags you'd have to buy from the stores, like the grocery store, for Worcester, where they, you wouldn't pick up your trash if it wasn't in the yellow bag. Oh, why? No, you, because it's a um, municipality that wants money. Ah, so these bro. people would basically, you know, strong arm the, the people that live in the city. Because if you don't buy, you can't buy regular trash bags, but you kind of have to. Because you're not going to waste the yellow bags and, and make me, they break. So what you would do is you'd, you'd double up. You'd go, ah. you'd get your brown trash bag, your normal one, and you'd put all your trash in it. And when it was trash day, you would cover that trash bag with a yellow bag. <laughs> Because it all makes oh sense. Goodness. Can you just spray paint your trash bag? No, they're, they're too smart <laughs> for that. They're too hip to the spray paint. <laughs> no, they'd make you fill it with the, I mean, you know, stupidity. Good idea, trash guy. Yeah, fuck them. Uh, I'm going to get through these true facts. Stokely Carmichael, oh, yeah. it was a real guy. Uh, the speech that he went to at the beginning, um, that, that was the first undercover mission he actually went on. So all of that was true, except for the meeting Patrice at the event. I think that might have been the last one. Wow, that was a lot to get through. That was a lot. Jeez. I'm, yeah. oof. <laughs> oof, I'm tired. That was, that was sheesh. Tons. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> what did you guys, I wanted to ask a couple questions. What did you guys think about the Alec Baldwin scene? Oh, man, that was interesting. I'm not sure it needed to be there. Yeah. I'm did curious on like what it was supposed to be. Like propaganda, right? But um, it's some, something yeah. that the, the, the clan would watch, you know, and get excited about. Um, but we're watching the outtakes plus it's also edited together. Right. 
Right. So I wondered if those outtakes were serious or if they were outtakes. I don't know. Ah, that was a weird. That was a weird opening. I it was say. a weird opening, but I also sort of thought I was fascinated by it, and and especially where they're like, I know I did the same thing when they showed Gone with it. I was like, Gone with the wind. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're like, I know that one because we watched it. No, I, I said it was one. racist. I know that scene. We talked about this scene. Yeah, it's going through my notes here, guys. I have a note that says it's like a sick joke, but it's real. Like that's why yeah. a lot of the stuff seemed funny to me. I think. Yeah, it's like there's oh, no way this you were is laughing nervously. Yeah, well, I was like, there's no way this is real. Oh, it is. This is entirely oh, real. Oh wait, this is actually a thing. Oh, it's a thing. I mentioned that the one of the two things I didn't like in the movie, the second one I didn't like, was at the very end of the movie before they kind of slide towards the burning cross in their yard. Uh, yeah. Patrice flip flops or whatever you want to call it on whether oh, like, I can't on yeah. whether she can be with him. Yeah, I didn't really like that. You know what I mean? Like, cause she before, like right before that, she was all like, "Oh, cool, yeah, we'll use your cop powers to uh, do right, good," and she actually used and... him to like get right. that guy. But then at the right. end, she's like, I, "I can't do this," and you're like, "Wait, what? Where did Wait, this come but from?" But you already did. Yeah, you already did this. That's fair. That's fair. I, that does seem sort of like out of left field all of a sudden. Yeah, even. it's just romantic drama that they need in a Hollywood film. Yeah. Do you guys think that it's going to age well? This movie with the few lines they have that kind of quote Trump directly. Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't probably know. like in terms of like there were a few hints where it's like make America gr- uh, bring the greatness right. back. Well, America stuff. first, America right. first, like right. that type Which of stuff. Is, I looked that up, and that actually is like a clan chant. It is. Oh, like that, that's not a. That's not a. Yeah, it's not a Trump thing, but he used it in his campaign. Yeah. So that's a big ass dog whistle visible. Wow, he is something else, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a crazy place we live in these days. Yeah. I think that might be all I have. I have a tab yeah. up here for uh, Birth of a Nation. Oh, oh God. But I don't really want to talk about that. I got tired. I mean, I, I understand the point of it, but I really got tired of watching the audience cheer it on. Uh-huh. Tired? Uh, what kind of annoyed? Or annoyed. Tired? I, was just, I was just like, all right, that's enough of that. All right, I'm, I'm annoyed. That's, that's fine. Can we just move <laughs> on, please? <laughs> John, John, it was his... Uh, Trying to edit on the fly, movie watching style. Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. next yeah. scene, director. Hey, hey, spike, guy, spike, hey guys, get, Spike, next. Spike, Spike, Spike. Hey guys, spike, next. I get your point. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they hey, so never guys, listen to me. Next. <laughs> wow. So wait, so this is coming on. We'll probably air this one right after the Oscars. Day after, yeah. Yeah, I just saw a bit of news that the the Academy on the commercial break. That's when it's going to give awards for cinematography and film editing. Cinematography and film editing, those aren't important. I guess people just, we just, all we want is just the actors and best film, best director, I guess. Yep. You know? Yep. You think? That's I what mean, those think. are the sexy ones. Cinematography that's, that's is pretty sexy. That, I, I, I Not think to it's, people it's that don't more, like film. Maybe, but it, it's one of the things that we consistently bring up in terms of enjoying a film. Yeah. But uh, we do. They think that people don't care. I think people have no idea what's what's what outside of these. Well, the Oscars outside of these, outside these, of these walls. Somehow. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're just going with whatever generates you know viewership and what is it that slows down the program and people don't care about and people might not care about cinematography because the stars aren't involved. You know. I mean, I and editing yeah, was the other you, one. That's- if you're not a big film buff, right? Like, there's people out there that don't even know what the fuck it is we're talking about. Those it's, people don't uh, care. Cinematography, film editing, live action short, and makeup hairstyling. I mean, live action short can go right to hell as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> makeup and hairstyling is important. Oh, you don't like the shorts. I mean, some of the shorts are really, I mean, all the shorts are really good, but where the hell are you supposed to watch them? They like play them for a week at small movie theaters and they play them all in a row. So it's like right. you have oh, four really? hours to watch all these movies. It's tough. Weird. I did it once. It was not fun. It was not good. A bunch of times. Oh, I used to like that. I did you not just a, go pee? I did, but I had to theater. like go during the movies because I didn't know like so? one of them was like an hour long. And I was like, how is this a short? I need to pee. Oh, wow. Yeah, that is long. Yeah. For, it's like just under the limit. Yeah, something. I don't know what the hard rule is, but it was pushing it for sure. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that might be all I have. That's it, guys. Go. Oh. Are you guys going to watch the Oscars? Probably not. Probably not. Probably depend, depends on kiddos. Instead of asking the 250 question, I'm going to say, would you support this movie or I guess be happy that this movie won Best Picture or not? Yes. Oh, yeah. I'd be Because the with story that. needs to be told. Everyone yeah. needs to listen to it. Everyone needs to learn. Yeah. Yeah. Just I, yeah. ignore the grain. 
sit a nominal distance <laughs> from your screen and you'll be happy. There's going to be a bunch of people, TC, that are going to be like, this screen doesn't exist. TC watched the shitty copy and that's that. That's pretty much it. I don't think there's grain, yeah. dude. I don't think there's grain. Oh, there's grain. I'm going to turn it on, take a video of my nice camera, and then I'm going to send it to you and you'll be like, there's no grain there. All right. I'll take a screenshot of whatever I watched it on. <laughs> And uh, we'll see what you say. <laughs> yeah. Anything else? No, that's all. What do we got next week? Next week, we're watching Mr. Smith Goes to Washington from 1939. This should be interesting in the context of things. Frank Capra 1939. 1939. Beer oh, Jesus. of the Wizard of Oz and Gone with the Wind. 1939. <sighs> that's not that long ago, TC. No. It's only 80 oh, years yesterday. ago. Only 80 years ago. It's That's right. Yeah, no, nope, no, no. If I were to bring Recent. one actor back to life from the dead, it would be Jimmy Stewart, let me tell you. That's grab his, Jimmy time. grab his corpse, shock him back to life. That ravenous <laughs> corpse. <laughs> I, I mean, I think about that all the time, too, Jenny. And, uh... That's a constant <laughs> Tuesday night thought, I yeah. have to say. And if you can't it do is. an impression from It's a Wonderful Life, like I hear it in my head, then he's going right back to sleep. <laughs> That's pretty funny, dude. <laughs> Sorry, dude, you didn't nail it. You gotta go down. You yeah. gotta go down. I need a drink of water. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> the synopsis right. of this movie is a naive man is appointed to fill a vacancy in the United States Senate. His plans promptly collide with political corruption, but he doesn't back down. This sounds kind of topical. Um, yeah. Hmm. Is, is it a talkie at least? Until, yeah, yeah. That's a silent movie. A Get out of town. No, it's, it's a talkie. No, it's a talkie. <laughs> oh, fuck it, eh? <laughs> Punt. Small heart attack. See ya. Bye. I'll yeah. see you guys in two weeks. Why don't you get a guest for the next one? <laughs> oh, TC, we have at least like four more silent movies to watch. Don't you worry. Ah, uh, shoot me in the face right now, and then yeah. I don't have to watch any. We'll space them out. We'll, we'll space them out with like the loudest movies ever. Maybe we'll watch like Pacific so, Rim or yeah. something. And we'll swap oh, like, God. we'll swap a couple. We're like, yeah. so we actually put this one four ahead of the last one because there was two in a row and we just couldn't do it. So mentally. this one's called The General. It's got Charlie Chaplin in it. We watched The General's Daughter with John Travolta instead. <laughs> <laughs> so we decided a movie with Nicolas Cage because it'd be more fun. And uh, we're not going to do that other one. Sorry. Uh, to the critics. Our apologies, <laughs> but we just can't seem to do this movie. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. So, yeah. Thanks for listening, everyone. Hopefully, this wasn't too much of a serious one, but whatever. If you haven't watched this yeah. movie, watch it. Yeah. I'd say yeah. go for it. I mean, it's, uh, yeah. It's rentable. Yep. You should give them money. It was, uh, so it was made for $15 million, which is kind of surprising. It's pretty low. Low. It yeah. is, yeah. Yeah. It's uh, like all went to the actors, it sounds like. Uh, but anyway, yeah, thanks for listening. Our website is mission250filmcast.com. Our list is frozen there, and you used to be able to go there and look what movie we're going to do next, but now it's kind but of a week to week basis. We don't basis. do that anymore. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Fuck <laughs> off. You can't do it. We're, go we're going back to the list next week. We're going to, I think we should stick to the list until one of us is, starts to lose it again. I think I'm, I'm recovered. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. That's fair. Or, uh, no, that, that's fine. Uh, or, or, or unless just something comes up that we really want to watch. Yeah. Yeah. Know, like, then. like if I decide to pick a movie. Yeah. yeah, there's that. <laughs> oh, you have at least one that, that you can just do whenever, yeah. TC. Yeah, you've exactly. Taken me TC. And John's you, picks you got one gimme there. Yeah. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, we'll get through the next one first. Yeah. Wait until you hit one, then we'll watch a good one. Wait till I need it. Be yeah. like, guys, I'm <laughs> yeah. about to lose it. We're watching this instead. Oh, dude. We're, we are. <laughs> nice. So, this is the start of a four movie stretch that might be a little rough. So, just in terms for right. TC, for TC. For the next one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, John and Denny can handle it because they're yeah. normal. Yeah, but well, uh, for me, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, well, cool. All right, thanks for watching this one, guys. I appreciate the, uh, you know. No, I'm hey, glad I watched. It. I'm glad. I'm glad to watch it. Yeah, me too. Good, good, good choice. Dan. Yes. Success. Yep. Yep. Uh, all right, guys. I'll talk to you next week. All right. All see right. you guys.